Now, whatever your political views, whatever your race or ethnic background, wherever you live, these past three months have tested you in some way. The coronavirus deaths, the lockdowns, massive job losses, education disruptions, loneliness, depression. And then just when we were turning the corner, protests, unrest, violence, the death of an unarmed black man, it all spilled out coast to coast after that senseless killing of George Floyd. Now, many of you wonder if it's even fixable at this point. I've been hearing from you. And given how much anger flashes on the screen every day and every night, and so many using a tragic death as permission to loot and even assault innocent business owners and law enforcement, the honest feeling of, of uh, its sadness and righteous anger over Floyd's death that could be channeled into positive dialogue, it's just overshadowed by destruction and chaos. Antifa and their allies, they're on a mission. And it ain't about justice. It's not about George Floyd. They want to abolish our rights under the Constitution, and they want to rewrite our history. They want us to hate our country like they hate our country. Now today, to clear my head, what I did is I went on a bike ride. I know that sounds frivolous at a time like this, but I had to clear my head. It was one of those days. And I took my oldest son around the north side of the National Mall. But what I saw when I was there made me want to cry. I've lived here for 30 years. And the only time before today that I saw National Guard troops around our national monuments was after 9-11. But there they were, dozens of them, guarding the Lincoln Memorial, the Korean War Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, and the World War II Memorial. Now, a few days earlier, the World War II Memorial had been vandalized with spray paint. For the extremist radicals, nothing, not even a place of honor such as this, is sacred. Well, once again, they misread the American people. These sites and what they represent, whom they honor, are sacred to us. So what did we do? Well, my son and I, we stopped and we said a short prayer. And then I proceeded to thank every member of the Guard that we came upon. And I told each and every one how much we appreciated them. It was a cross-section of America, African-American men and women serving alongside white men and women, mostly young. Uh, they were keeping watch as runners, tourists streamed by, some protesters, but it was quiet. Now, presumably, they're more worried about what happens at night, tonight in Washington, and we hope for the best. When those brave spray paint militants come out to desecrate and destroy. Of course, none of them know what real sacrifice is, for if they did, they'd be doing something positive with their lives. The way forward for the rest of us, though, requires that we get back to the basics. We don't need a new normal. We just need normal. Because normal Americans want a fair and just society where the rule of law applies equally to all people, regardless of race. Normal Americans are disgusted by the killing of George Floyd. Normal Americans think the current situation is so out of control that the U.S. military needs to be called in to bring order to the streets. Check out this new morning consult poll showing 58% support calling in the troops to aid state and local police, including nearly half of the Democrats. Now, the same party that's been promising African-Americans better lives for decades. Our first African-American president was propelled into office not once but twice with a majority of a white support. Yet when it comes to delivering actual results, including for African-Americans, despite what you hear in the media, despite everything you heard just today in the media, Donald Trump has done better than anyone. Before the coronavirus, most jobs created went to women and minorities, 7 million. In total, most of those women and minority. Black Americans saw their lowest unemployment numbers ever. Increased home ownership, school choice, criminal justice reform, creation of opportunity zones. Those weren't hashtags or slogans. Those are real policies that people worked really hard on to deliver real results. Joe Biden was in the Senate for, what, 30 years? He was VP for eight. And all he can come up with now are symbolic gestures. Slogans, hashtags, professions of empathy. They're fine. 
but they don't create jobs. They do not create opportunity, but they can create the illusion of caring. I won't traffic in fear and division. I won't fan the flames of hate. I'll seek to heal the racial wounds that have long plagued our country. This job is not about me. It's about you. It's about us. We are in the battle for the soul of this nation. He's been saying the same thing for decades, and he's done nothing. And if he and Obama knew how to deliver all that that he just said, they would have delivered what he said during their two terms in office. Now, I understand for a lot of people, Trump may be rough around the edges. They sometimes don't like his tone or his tweets or his bravado. It might turn you off at times. But he's worked harder with better results than any politician I know I've ever met to bring prosperity to all people and as especially wants prosperity for the African-American community. Now, remember, it's the working class people at the core of his America First movement. The rich elites, they, they, all those people from Wall Street and Hollywood, they voted for Hillary and they're going to vote for Biden. And by the way, those are the same people, many of them never Trumpers, by the way, who thought outsourcing jobs to China was a grand idea. And they're the same ones who sought to keep foreign workers flooding into the country, including illegal immigrants. All of them are for Joe Biden. The America First movement, you know, it's never going to have a lot of celebrities, but it has something better. It has policies that lead to prosperity for more people. And the more prosperous you are, most of the time, the less resentful you will be and the more peace you will have. We want that for all people. And when Biden supporters say they, you know, think about it, they say well, they want to defund or even abolish the police, ask yourself for a moment, who's that really going to help? Who will be the victims of those crimes that go unprosecuted? The working class and disadvantaged people, that's who. Because the rich people, the ones that are going to vote for Biden, they can hire their own security. But everybody else is just going to end up more vulnerable and less safe. That's how that'll roll. We've seen evidence of this, by the way, during the past week, when cops were nowhere to be found. President Trump has demonstrated that he will work with anyone of any party in any state, any time to help more people get out of poverty. And that includes, by the way, reforming institutions to ensure that everyone gets a fair shot. But that process doesn't require burning it all down or creating a perpetual grievance culture like the one that exists on college campuses. That'll just set everybody back at a time when normal America wants to take a step forward. And that's the angle.